Oh, hello there, everybody. Hope and pray you are all well on this Friday. You know, I uh, was thinking, you know, what can I talk about today? You know, and as I've, you know, gone through the holidays and gone through just the beginning of a new year, um, we definitely haven't had many videos this year, but it just seems like you know, the compounding of of things has really, you know, brought in one word to my mind, fear. You know, fear is something that is so, so very much controlling, right? And we just know that it is palpable sometimes, you know? <laughs> Like, we, we have palpable fear. I remember growing up and, and, you know, living up in northern Wyoming, you know, it was dark, you know. Um, you know, it was maybe dark as eastern Colorado, and depending on which areas uh, you you live in. You know, the, the palpable fear as my lights went out in the car one day, it just struck me like how dark it is out here and you know it made me turn on the emergency lights and you know pull over and find out what was going on and you know thankfully it was just a small problem but you know fear is something that you know especially the fear of the unknown fear of the future uh, fear of a virus uh, is is really something that that is there in life you know we fear uh, the loss of family members. We fear the, you know, what could happen in these situations or that situation. We might fear spiders or <laughs> fear rodents destroying a part of our house. Or, you know, as a homeowner, we, we fear this or that. As a, as a renter, we fear this or that. As a society, we fear, you know, this or that. As, you know, people groups and other things. You know, fear is something that is part of the human experience you know and, and as I was thinking about this I, I googled you know Bible verses on fear and I got one page <coughs> excuse me got one page that you know is nine verses in the Bible that deal with fear and it uh, the first four of them were from the book of Psalms. And I was like, what what better place to go to deal with our feelings, right? You know, fear is an emotion. We feel it, you know. So it's like, how do we deal with a feeling before the Lord? The book of Psalms is a great answer for dealing with emotions, dealing with disappointment, dealing with fear, anxiety, all these different things. The word of the Lord deals with all of these avenues of life, of truth, of our society, of our bodies, of all these different things. And, and fear is something that we've seen throughout this last year. And even now as we go into the unknown, you know, we'll see how things play out in the future. We know the end. We know God wins. We can be sure of that, but as we pass through life, how do we how do we have theology fold into our lives and how do we have our lives fold into theology? How do we <coughs> have a in the theological term a, a doxology, a praise a praise worthiness of the Lord of and of living out life. How do we do that? Well, let's turn to the book of Psalms together. But if you want to turn in your Bibles with me to Psalm 23, you know, this coming Sunday, because this will release on Friday. So, yeah, on Sunday we'll be talking about probably the most known Bible verse ever, John 3.16. It sums up Christianity today. 
Let's start with Psalm 23. I'll just read one of the verses of the psalm, but it's probably one of the you know, better known psalms as well. A better known passage in the Bible as well still. But it says this in Psalm 23 verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If we fear robbers, if we fear thieves breaking in, what do we invest in? We invest in locks. We invest in security. You know, brinks or um, whoever else. <laughs> yeah, Ring, I guess. Ring is one of those new companies that <coughs> we uh, are it's getting out there. Well, you know, you're at the store and someone rings your doorbell and you can see them and you can talk with them. I'm like, how cool is that? That technology is allowing that. You know, we invest in security systems. We invest in all these different things. But what investment is there against evil, against death, against darkness in life? Well, right here. You know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even if, if death... <coughs> overcompasses me, overcompasses my society, you know, is the thing that we're thinking about. I will fear no evil. I won't fear it because you are with me and your rod, your staff, you know, the things of a shepherd that are to bring the sheep closer, to protect the sheep from, from enemy and danger. You know, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, even though he dies, even though you die, you will live because of who he is. He is the good shepherd. That even if we face death, we await to wake to glory. Because we are righteous in him. That is more palpable than fear. More, more felt, right? Uh, the next one is Psalm 27. And I, yeah, go ahead and read all of these psalms <coughs> in your own study. So Psalm 23. And then uh, Psalm 27, uh, verse 1. says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Very much the question of who do you trust in? You know, there's there's a lot of inconsistency in life. There's a lot of unknowns in life that even experts can't understand. But if the Lord is your stronghold in life, He is your stronghold in death as well. What can we be afraid of? We are, <coughs> excuse me, more than conquerors in him who loved us. That's Jesus Christ. He loved us. He died to save sinners. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? If God is for us, who can be against us? Right? In Romans 8, you know, who can be against us? Nothing. No one. Even the evil within ourselves can be beaten by Jesus Christ. Because he is a grand overcomer. It's an amazing passage of scripture. <laughs> uh, the next one is Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verses 4 and 5. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look at him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. Hmm. Seek the Lord. You know, the locks on our houses might stop someone for a while. Might, you know, other things might stop evil coming in. You know, policies and laws and all these other things, but, but evil is the intent of man's heart. 
in any and all things. <coughs> that we would seek the Lord and know that he answers us. That we would seek the Lord and say, Lord, I fear this. Help me in this. You know, throughout 2020, the Lord really worked in that as well of, you know, we fear this or we're dealing with this. And, you know, God helped us and showed us how to overcome those things. You know, he delivers us from our fears. You know, he is the rescuer. You know, and those that look on him are, are radiant. You know, I think about Moses' face after viewing the glory of God, and he, he veiled it because it was glowing so much. Now, our faces will never be ashamed because we will exalt, we will mirror God as our purposed intent is to know God and enjoy him forevermore, as the short Westminster Catechism says in question and answer. <coughs> question and answer number one. Uh, let's uh, head over to one more psalm, Psalm 46. Uh, no, verses 1 through 3. I do apologize for coughing so much. Apparently, I don't cough unless I'm around other people now. You know, if I'm at home, I never cough. But if I'm talking to someone on the phone or if I'm talking to people on YouTube, I'm coughing. And I'm like, what the heck? So, I don't know. But I do apologize. I hope this is still an encouragement to you guys, even though I'm coughing every once in a while. Um, but Psalm 46, 1 through 3. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the hearts of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, Though the mountains tremble at its swelling. What stands in the way of a life well lived for God? Fear? Intimidation? Persecution? Don't want to be called this or that? Don't want to be seen as an outcast in society. These are huge things now. And I I fear, <laughs> or I suspect, that as things go the way I see them going, I'm not God, I'm a pastor, that I, I see cultural trends and I look at different things and you look at the data and it's just like, well, you know, people are more, we're sheep. So we're going to go with the crowd. We're going to, we're going to, oh yeah, this is fine. <laughs> it's like, okay, seen it with other sins throughout my life. See it with other ones as well. As that happens more and more, the, the churches are losing people. Losing believers even. Losing and waning influence in society. You know, it's like, how, how do we aspire to be a godly voice in a generation that is so about other things? You know, we aspire to preach and proclaim that God is our refuge and strength. Even if there's how many people? God is our refuge and strength, not our numbers. We stand in truth. We are the remainment. We are the people of God. We are the body of Christ that cannot be overcome by hell. Christ builds his church. Christ is the only one that can shut the doors of a church. He is the one that takes away lampstands. No one else. Therefore, we will not fear even though the earth gives way, even if our persuasion or our influence on a culture wanes, that we would take steadfast hope that he is our very present help in trouble. 
Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, if there's earthquakes and famines and plagues and desolation and all these other things going on in life, if there's viruses and wars and rumors of wars, that we would take hope in the Lord. All these things and more will happen have happened, do happen, the tribulation will be the most extensive, crazy period of history we will ever witness. And being a history fan, I'm like looking at all of this throughout history, and I'm like, so those seven years are going to be crazier than all of that? Woo. <laughs> but we have this expectation of rapture, that Jesus is coming back, not to deal with sin, but to save those, to rescue those that eagerly await him. That's the hope for the believer. That if we, if we die, we're, we gain because we're with him. If we're here, we go on, we write, we speak, we teach, we preach. We pass the baton. And we eagerly await his coming. If that's the thing to override all the fear over all the anxiety, all these things and all of this stuff to override it. We understandably need to live in the light of his coming. The king is coming with kingdom intact and he's going to reign and he's going to make things right. That is an amazing promise. He is our refuge and strength. Because he is a God that keeps his promises. I hope and pray that's encouraging to you all. I hope and pray you have a great Friday. I know this week, as I, as I record this early in the week, this week is going to be crazy. Let us be at peace with everyone as much as we can be. Let us love our enemies. Let us pray for those that persecute us or plan to persecute us or, or want to take our influences away. Let us be a light shining in the darkness. Let us not be silenced, but let us be steadfast and speak the truth of our Lord in the world today. I hope and pray that this has been an encouragement. I really enjoyed going through fear, <laughs> talking about fear in the Bible. I know there's tons of other verses out there, but these were really good, really heartfelt, because it's a heartfelt thing. And so run to the book of Psalms, read those Psalms, read more, read other things. Be about the study of Scripture, my brothers and sisters. I hope and pray you have a grand day, a good weekend. I hope you can join us on Sunday in person or online. And uh, also our sermon audio is on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcast. So you guys have a blessed day and we will talk to you later.